In this video, we're going to take a look at a particular type of integral called an improper integral. Now, uh, what is it that makes an integral improper? We know what integrals are, but, but I think the new word for us is going to be this word improper. Uh, to, to help explain this, let's actually go back for a minute and remind ourselves of the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is something we studied uh, much earlier in calculus and is something that we know well. Uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus helps us find the area under a curve, right? And it says this, it says, let f of x be a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b. Then it says that the integral from a to b of f of x, the way that you find the area under the curve from a to b, is you take the antiderivative of the function, that's capital F, and then you plug in B and you plug in A and you subtract, right? We, we know that very well. Uh, we can do it with uh, little to no, tr no trouble at all. Um, however, there's some subtle things about the fundamental theorem of calculus that we usually glaze over and we've probably never paid attention to, but, but we need to start paying attention to now. Okay, and what I'm looking at is the uh, the fine print, right? The, as actually in the first sentence, uh, most people know the punchline, but what about what came before it? What about this stuff? What about the criteria to even be uh, able to use the fundamental theorem of calculus? Let's read that a little bit more closely. Let little f be a continuous function. Let little f be continuous on a closed interval from A to B. Right, so if either one of these was violated, if it, for instance, wasn't continuous, or if the interval wasn't a closed interval, then, uh, to, you know, truth be told, we could not use the fundamental theorem of calculus technically because the criteria uh, hasn't been satisfied. This was an if then type of statement here. And so that's what's going to lead us to understand what an improper integral is. If it satisfies all these things, then it's what we call proper. I'll write you an example. Uh, if you had the integral from zero to five of x squared dx, well then that's that's just the, uh, the area under the curve for the x squared graph, you know, starting at zero and ending at five. And obviously you have some area there. Sorry, my picture's kind of small. Um, it's a closed interval from zero to five. X squared doesn't have any asymptotes, you know, or anything like that on the interval zero to five. So this type of integral here, uh, we would call proper, right? This is a proper integral that I've, that I've just written up here, right? I'm, I'm more interested in this video about integrals that are improper, right? In other words, ones that don't uh, satisfy all the necessary criteria, right? So there's two ways for an integral to be improper, right? So what are those two ways? Well, the first way is if the interval that you're integrating over isn't finite. We expect to have an interval like zero to five or two to 10 or negative one to three or something like that. But uh, if your interval, let's say went from one to infinity, then technically that would not be a proper integral. It would be improper. All right, so let me show you an example here. Let's say we had, uh, for instance, the integral from one to infinity of one over x dx, right? One over x dx. So here's one, and I know what one over x looks like. It looks something like this. All right, it's a graph that we know pretty well. Okay, and it kind of flattens out you know, as you approach the x-axis. It doesn't touch the x-axis, but it gets closer to it. And uh, so what I want here by this notation is the area starting at 1 onwards to infinity. All right, so we're going to accumulate all this area. Now you might say, well, Devin, why are we even talking about this? Because uh, isn't it true that if you go on for forever, then you'll accumulate an infinite amount of area in this this question doesn't even make sense. Well, I'll tell you, um, maybe not specifically for this example, but there are examples where if this function dwindles to zero fast enough, it is actually possible to have an in integral go to infinity 
yet still equal a finite number. It's kind of a, a mind-blowing concept, but we'll, we'll unpack some of those details in a later video where we actually work out some of these examples. But for now, uh, let's just understand what this notation means. Um, you could not do this in integral like this. You could not say, oh, well, the integral of one over X is the natural log of X, and then I'll put a bracket with a one and an infinity. See, what you're trying to use is the fundamental theorem of calculus, but you can't, right? It doesn't satisfy the, uh, the necessary criteria for the fundamental theorem of calculus. So you just have to be very careful uh, where you're using um, you know, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, we can handle these, uh, and but I'm not going to cover that in this video. We'll handle each of these two situations uh, in the next two videos. So um, be on the lookout for how to handle an improper integral where your interval is not finite. All right, but for now, let's, uh, I think it's sufficient just to know what makes an improper integral, and this is one way. All right, the other way to be an improper integral is if f of x has a finite number of infinite discontinuities. Now, that sounds a little wordy. Uh, why can I not just say discontinuous, right? Because that, that seems to be what it's um, fighting against from back on, on one of the, the first few pages. Uh, the reason for that is, is um, uh, more of a practical concern. Uh, if you just had just a plain Jane vanilla discontinuity, maybe one that went like this, right? Maybe it split apart and then continued on its way. If your interval was from, let's say, negative 1 to 10, but the discontinuity, the break happened at 5, well, then we actually know an old calculus way to handle this type of situation. You would integrate from negative 1 to 5, and then the rest of the way from 5 to 10, and then add those answers together. So really the only interesting ones that are uh, that would make it improper would be an infinite discontinuity. Now what, what do I mean by an infinite discontinuity? What we're really talking about here is vertical asymptotes. That's the, that's the, the way that we are uh, intending to mean an infinite discontinuity. Um, now I've already shown you an example of an interval that wasn't finite. Let me show you an example of uh, something that has uh, one of these infinite discontinuities that I'm talking about here. Uh, let's say we had the function f of x equals one over x minus three. Right now, I will say just having uh, a in or integrating a function that has a vertical asymptote doesn't automatically make that integral an improper integral. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we were integrating 1 over x minus 3, this guy who has the vertical asymptote, on the interval from 4 to 10. Now think about that for a minute, from 4 to 10. Uh, if you integrate from here to here, then notice on that interval, it's a closed interval with no discontinuities and, and no vertical asymptotes, of course. And so this would actually be a proper integral. This would not be improper. It would be a proper integral. Uh, you could work this one the way you, we've always worked them early in our calculus course. Now on the other hand, let's think about this one, the integral of 1 over x minus 3, same, same integrand, but this time on the interval from 1 to 10. So you have 1 here and then you have 10 out here. Well then you have this, this, weird, uh, this weird situation, here's 1 to 10. Um, you, your uh, area basically somehow wraps around that asymptote and you can imagine all sorts of bad things happen and, and in fact they do because these guys blow up to infinity or to negative infinity. So uh, anyways, we have lots of questions now. Now we need to start getting some answers. We now know what is an improper integral, but we do not yet know how to handle these guys. So uh, it, next in the upcoming videos, we're going to tackle these two uh, situations specifically where your interval is not finite and or where your function has an, uh, an infinite discontinuity like a vertical asymptote or something like that.